Hey friends, hope you're doing fine. Now probably you're familiar with uh, an issue regarding dates tables in Power BI. Because oftentimes you create the dates table either in uh, Power Query or in uh, DAX. And when you do this, then most often with certain measures you have um, all the dates to the end of the specific period. And maybe not all the dates to the end of your specific uh, sales table. So if you have taken one of my classes, you know what I mean. But let me show it to you. At first, let's explore a DAX way in order to create a dates table. So in my model, currently I only have an orders table. And we all know that it's best practice when you have uh, an orders table or sales table that you also create your own dates table, which you then use in order to create your measures, your time intelligence functions. So let's do that. And uh, this time I will not do it with the Power Query table, which I most often use, I will do it in DAX, just to show that this is also possible, if you just need a simple dates table. To do this, we have basically two options. We can use the calendar function or the calendar auto function. In this case, I want to use the calendar auto function because the main advantage is that calendar auto should normally detect the tables in your model, in my case, the orders table, and then make sure that the time frame it creates uh, extends from the beginning of the first year in my orders table and ends in the last year of my orders table. So in my orders table, I have data from 2019, starting on the 4th of July, up to 2021. So what I expect is when I use the calendar auto function, that it creates a simple one column with dates starting at the 1st of January 2019 and ending at the 31st of December 2021. So covering three years in total. So let's do that. I need to go to modeling and then I make sure that you click on new table because we create a DAX measure and it is a table. It is not uh, a measure. So don't click on new measure or new column. Click on new table. And then the, the formula itself is quite simple because uh, it's simply the expression calendar auto. So we can say uh, my dates TBL is equal to calendar, and you can see there are two options. Calendar would mean that we fix um, the start and the end using the date function, for instance, and calendar auto would allow us to simply specify only the fiscal year period if you want to do that, so, um, or we just leave it empty without any arguments. And when we execute it, we'll see that now we have created the dates table. And then make sure that you go to the model view and connect the two tables. So the order state connected to the dates column in the dates table. As I said, this is an easy dates table because it has no additional columns right now. For instance, the year, the month, and so on, or the week number. These are columns we can create when we add additional columns, but by default, it simply gives us one column with the dates. And then we also wanna make sure that if I go back to my model view, I will uh, select my table here, and then I go to table tools, and here uh, I want to mark this as a dates table. So mark as date table, and then I specify the column, which is in this case a date column, validated successfully, click OK. By the way, this only works if you have a continuous date range, meaning there are no gaps. So from the 1st of January 2019 up to the 31st of December 2021, each day is present and only once in the dates table. This is uh, the required setup, okay? Then we click OK and we are good to go. We have our dates table and we have our orders table. And if we take a look at the dates table, click it and go to date and let's see. And you see that it starts in 2019 on the 1st of January. And if I scroll to the end, uh, scroll down to the end, here we go. And it ends in uh, 31st of December, 2021. So exactly the three year range is covered, which comes from the orders table. That's why calendar order is quite helpful because it scans the data and then it should return you exactly the three years period you need in my case. So um, that's it. Now next, of course, you might want to add a helper column. Something like, for instance, to make sure that when you filter certain visuals, you want to have some kind of filter or helper filter column, which allows you to see which of the dates here is actually present in the orders table. Meaning, if I make a second visualization, so let me just click on the dates one more time, 
click on it. And uh, then let's drag this up, but make it a little bit smaller, like that. And let's uh, drag this in here. And now watch what happens if I use my orders. And I will not, uh, not even create a measure here. I simply put any kind of numerical field like the sales here directly into the dates here. Then if I do that, you'll see that now it starts on the 4th of July and it ends here at the end, which is somewhere in May, which is here the 6th of May, 2021. So that's the data itself from the orders table. So for the other dates here and here, we do not have any kind of, uh, of data, of sales data. But the, the time frame is still there. And this sometimes leads to, uh, let's say, issues, right? Because then in certain kinds of DAX expressions and so on, then you have uh, additional, uh, or you display then the additional uh, time uh, in here, which do not actually cover any data, which is sometimes a little bit annoying. And there are various ways to work around this. I have covered several, several of them already, but um, maybe you want to simply use a helper column, which tells you exactly, is there data for this date or not? And the easiest way to do this is simply check for the minimum, which is date, which is the 4th of July, and the maximum date, if I scroll down, which is this one here. And then we simply uh, return here for each of the dates a true or false, or any other kind, like included, excluded, whatever. Some kind of text, which tells us then, okay, whether there is, in this case, sales for this date or not. So is it within this time frame from the order state or not? So to do this in DAX, let's simply create a new column in our dates table here. So if I uh, select the dates table, so click on new column, and then we are here, and here we simply check now, let's say here um, included, let's call this included is equal to, and uh, then I say if the from the dates table, the date column is this greater or equal to the minimum of the orders table, the order date, this one. And at the same time, so I can use a double ampersand, is the dates table, the date itself, is it less or equal to the maximum of the order date from the orders? And if that is the case, then I would like to return a true, true. And if that's not the case, I want to return a false, false. I can close this. And of course I can then customize this. Maybe go here to no line uh, like that. And at the same time, do this here as well. Shift enter. And then if that's the case, go to new line like that. And sometimes you could also put this maybe to a new line. So how you want to form with this is up to you, but this could be one way. And now we can execute this. And if we do that, let's, we have this included column. And if I also put it in, for instance, this visualization, let's tick it here. You see that here, overall, we get false everywhere. And now as soon as we got to the 4th of July, let's scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. And here we go. You can see the first true entry is on the 4th of July, which is the minimum, if I scroll up here, of the order date. And then if we scroll down in here, again, scroll down further uh, to the end of the truth, which is... Uh, in here, which is the 6th of May 2021, which we already figured out is the last day here of the sales. And all the other dates where we have false in here do not contain any data. And you can also take a look at this in the data view if you want, you get exactly the same behavior. And this helper column now allows you, of course, to filter, right? Because you can easily drag it uh, onto the filter visual, for instance, to filter any kind of visual. It doesn't have to be a table. But yeah, that's how that works. So hopefully that was helpful. Thanks a lot for watching. If you haven't done so far, don't forget to subscribe and also like the video. Thanks a lot. Take care and see you in the next one. Until then, best guys.